Uh, we have Lori. Lori is our uh, one of our favorite registered dietitians, and she's been supporting Above and Beyond Cancer uh, since it started as well. And she's here to offer uh, for us why or how food um, impacts inflammation and specifically the food that we're cooking today and how the qualities of the food today and our tea um, have an impact on inflammation. So before we get started with that, we'll start with our virtual people. Mary, I'll have you go first and then Alicia can introduce herself. And if you can share where you're calling from and if you've taken a cooking class before, one thing that you uh, learn to love to eat or recipe that you've cooked again. And if this is your first time taking the cooking class, then share any one thing that you love to eat and prepare. So Mary, um, we'll start with you. Okay, my name is Mary Kassir and I live in Des Moines. Um, I took one class there, um, oh, maybe last year, the year before, before COVID times. And I think that was also some soups as well. Um, but I'm just really excited to cook here at home and uh, have a glass of wine while I do it. <laughs> <laughs> Lucky girl. Thanks, Mary. <laughs> Alicia. Hi, I'm Alicia Bacham and I live in Waukee. I have not done a cooking class, but I do like to make soups. So I was excited that this was going to be a soup recipe. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Um, Amy, you want to share any food you've liked from class? Sure, this is my third class. Um, and the last one I came to was the stuffed acorn. Mm -hmm. And so I, I like acorn squash, but I was pretty limited on what I had done with my acorn squash. And so I kind of modified what I had in the house with the recipe that we had learned. And I loved what I made. So mm -hmm. thank you for that. Was that the class that had that eight, the squash hummus too? No, oh. no, that was really good. Which I made two days ago. Butter <laughs> <laughs> squash hummus. <laughs> it is it's so good. I was eating it from just straight out of the bowl without dipping it in anything. <laughs> this is my first class. Hey, is there anything you really like to make and, and show your name? Oh, I'm Erin, and this is my first class. Um, I like cooking all sorts of things. I don't know what my favorite would be. Okay. My name is Heidi, and uh, I've not taken a class before, but I have taught outdoor cooking classes. Yeah, uh, so very cool. Let's get it together. <laughs> we know where Heidi's going to be doing this spring with us. <laughs> yes, I'm happy to partner with you. Um, and I, I love baking. Um, I grew up baking, baking things rather than cooking and preparing meals. Okay. Did you just take care of stuff? No. You should be <laughs> making at the state fair. Oh, oh gosh, I don't know if I'm to that level. Oh, <laughs> no. I think so. Heidi, yeah. what's your business that you're doing out there um, cooking class? I'm a naturalist with Polk County Conservation, so I work at Justice Park and do oh all gosh, kinds of practice. That is so cool. That is so cool. I wonder if we've emailed you. Have you one of my coworkers have you been okay? Okay. Probably awesome. had some contact with you. Very cool. Okay. Um, I'm Diane, and this is my second class, and I don't like to cook. <laughs> I'm glad my daughter's living at home for a little bit, so she will cook for us, but I need to learn to cook all this stuff. Was there anything favorite that you liked of those two cooking classes, something that stuck out that you really liked? It was good. Um, interesting. The time, right? Oh, yeah, 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 right. Well, if someone else is cooking for you, that's an easy thing to do. I know. <laughs> I'm Rachel. Uh, I have not done a cooking class before, so this is like a new. It's something that I, if I had to cook or that I'm asked to cook, it's lasagna. So not <laughs> healthy, but yeah. yummy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really yummy. Yeah. Um, I'm Lanny. Uh, I have not been a cooking class either. I'm not really a huge fan of cooking either. Um, <laughs> but I probably cook kind of like Rachel does. Like, I don't know, I grew up with casseroles and things like that that my mom always made. I guess that's kind of what I go to, which aren't always healthy. Right. Either. 
Yeah, we'll get some <laughs> yummy ones out there for sure. Well, uh, welcome all first time cooking class people. And then, like I said, we're going to learn great recipes. We'll learn some great nutrition uh, tips behind that as well. I will say that there are many recipes that I've learned in class that I have truly made a second time in expanding my repertoire. But one thing that really was a home run for me it was new was delicata squash. And I'd never even heard of delicata squash. And we did that last year. And that has been a home run um, as well. So lots of things to learn. Um, all right. And I want to introduce Jill. Jill is our Steven Spielberg. She gets everything <laughs> perfect. And this will also be available on our, on our YouTube channel after cooking class today. You can find other cooking classes on our YouTube channel as well. All right, Teresa. Jill also, I'll give her a plug. Jill also teaches classes here yes. and sponsors state fair classes <laughs> and it has is a cookbook author so she's in the background with this right now that she's very much could be in the foreground so <laughs> if you get a chance to take her paella class mm. yeah usually sells out pretty quickly okay so hello lori and everyone else i have a i'll kind of do this and in and out of this I'll stand back, talk, and then put my mask on and go forward to the food. Um, but I did a little treat because we're always talking about cooking our rainbow. And I came across this soup recipe um, this weekend, and it's called triple carrot. And I was very curious. That's just kind of why I like to cook, because I'm very curious. And um, uh, so, you can use your pens to write this down. So simple. So don't tell me you can't do it because it is so <laughs> simple. No excuses is what I'm hearing. None on this. So this is what Lori likes. She likes this uh, rainbow food and it's very pure. So the first carrot is peel your carrot. You've washed your carrots, but peel your carrots. Okay. Throw your peels in the pot um with three cups of water and a roughly chopped onion so you're making carrot stock that's all you're using your peels and your onion then you're going to bring that to a boil let it cook down a little bit and put it on a simmer well then you're preparing the other part the second part of the carrot soup so you've peeled your carrots, then you rough chop them. And when I say rough chop, you could do it in any size you want, but the smaller cuts, the quicker your carrots will, will saute. So, um, you know, if that's a half inch or a quarter inch or an inch, just know the smaller you slice your carrots, the quicker they will cook with another onion that you've chopped up. So you're gonna saute that in your oil of choice, which could be olive oil, it could be butter, but you need at least three tablespoons. So you're gonna saute that. And saute, you're gonna saute it maybe five minutes until you take your low paring knife and you poke through a carrot and it goes through easily. So that's your second carrot. So you have carrots, onions, and water. The triple carrot is carrot juice. So you need three cups of carrot juice. Here's the carrot juice, maybe. Here's the carrot juice, but the oddball. If all you can find, it has vegetables in it or something, or ginger in it, go for it. You just want carrot juice. That's your third carrot. So you put, now that your vegetables are sauteed, you put your three cups of carrot juice in your sauteed vegetables. Then you're going to strain your onions and your carrot peels. Look at the color of this. It's orange. It's like perfect, Lori. It's perfect. So we've got orange stock, we've got orange carrots, and we have um, 
uh, orange, well, not orange juice, carrot juice that's orange. So you've done three cups of carrot juice and two cups of stock <clears throat> go into your pot and you can either take it out and blend it or if you have a stick blender and there you have it. You could have, you can add ginger, you could add some hot sauce, but this is what you're getting. It's just carrot soup. That's it. Water, onions, and carrots. Very good. So you just use a blender if you don't have a yeah. Soup. Just remember, don't put um, don't fill your blender because that hot liquid, when you hit the blender, is gonna come flying out of your blender. It just expands. So you're gonna do it maybe a third full and put a towel over the top so nothing splatters. Because that's usually if you have to throw it into a blender, that's where it goes wrong is it's filled too full and then it expands and explodes. You don't want to get hurt. But that's my little tip for tonight. That's your take home. I don't cook. All you need is carrots, onions, and water and some carrot juice. But I think you can get that at 7-Eleven or Quick Trip or coming right down, right right so you know, run own. down the street right. right run down the street yeah Lori, is there anything you want to say uh <laughs> real quick about carrots and and that the power that that triple carrot would would pack uh <clears throat> well carrots are the um really high in the beta carotene which we talk about frequently and sorry i have a a cold um and beta carotene with good gut bacteria converts over to vitamin A. And vitamin A is the number one nutrient needed to keep the lining of our lungs and our GI tract um, nice and healthy. So great awesome. boosting. Good, beta carotene, vitamin A, good for digestion. Yeah, and your lungs. It's really good. And the lungs. And the lungs, okay. Yep. Really awesome. good too. Make some, Lori. It'll be good for you. I love carrots. <laughs> okay, so um, we'll get started on prepping. This recipe, um, I love my new little book, plant-based um, cookbook, right? So lots in here to pick from, and we'll be cooking some other things out of there for other classes. So it recommends... A pressure cooker. I love pressure cookers, but I didn't know if we have many people that hardly cook, they would hardly have a pressure cooker. So that's kind of um, pressure cookers are so important with quick meals and holding the nutrients in. They really um, uh, were revolutionary, I think, for the home cook, probably in the 50s. They just didn't have the safety mechanisms that they do now. So and then um, many people probably have Instapots because um, that was a multi-million dollar ad campaign <laughs> on um, every place you clicked mm -hmm. and you didn't understand how every time it was going to come back to you. So that was a lesson <laughs> in marketing. So if you have one, I hope you're using it. But um, so it's about working the yeah, it, it can. I don't know anything about pressure or um, Instapots, I know more about pressure cookers. So I bought into the marketing. That's <laughs> <laughs> right. If, it, if you use it, if you use it, it makes sense. But there's there's a lot of garage sales that are going to happen, mm -hmm. you know, in a few years and like won't even be out of the box. Um, all right, so I've modified, as Mary said, the recipe, so it's not, and I made notes, and I just closed the book, so hang on here. Oh, there it is. All right, so um, part of drawing out flavor is to saute, so we're going to start with our onions. We have our oil measured. Oil do you like to olive oil is is truly what we espouse kind of in these classes um there are lots of oils out there and and lori can address that but um it certainly is a very pure oil if you're if you know where you're buying it you know there's lots of additives in the olive oils um just to make the volume 
So depending on what the rules are, but if you're buying US made olive oil, buy from California or Georgia, because they have the strictest rules and they have to be those, they have, I don't know, all kinds of standards. So um, I don't know where else it's grown in the US, but I know those two states have high standards and packaging standards and rules that go with the packaging. So let me do, I just need a little bit of a, all right this is a big surface so we're going to cook this quickly and you want it to ripple it needs to ripple before you add your onions it's not going to hurt something if it doesn't but so lots of onion Ooh, lots of flavor, <laughs> lots of onion. So, onion in the pan, saute, and that's sugar. Let me do some salt here. You don't even need to have that. You might later. But remember, salt is added to draw out the flavor. Pepper is added to make flavor. So oftentimes you're going to start with salting as you go rather than as a finish, unless it's a finishing salt. Okay, we'll get that going. That's going to be like five minutes. Okay. So what we're also going to do is because um, you would normally infuse your lemon grass in the pressure cooker, right? So who's familiar with lemon grass? Do you know what lemon grass is? Great. Okay. It's readily available at Asian grocery stores. Anywhere else, you're probably going to um, get um, hard lemon grass. So it's, it's hard on the outside and you take away the peels, but then it's soft so you can press it not rock hard. Um, and what we're trying to do is infuse the flavor in the coconut milk. So um, we've taken away the peel that's hard and we've cut it down to about the last six inches and that's the best part. And we're not going to do anything with this other than infuse the milk and then after we've infused the milk, take it back out. We're not going to eat it. We're just infusing the flavor. And so we're going to use cilantro, but you know, what do you do with the pesky little things, right? Well, they still have a lot of flavor. So we're going to use the stems of the cilantro. I should have asked anybody allergic to cilantro. Does it taste like soap? <laughs> okay, we're good. Because <laughs> that's the allergy, right? You're uh, tastes like soap. That's an allergy for most people? Yeah, it's, it's considered an allergy, but it tastes like soap. It's, yeah, I've heard that. Yeah. So, it's so tragic. Yeah. <laughs> it's not the chase it. Yeah, or it's no. cilantro. Okay. So you're infusing the cilantro as well, Teresa, because well, that will be drained out? Yep. Yeah. We're just going to... So I made the mistake of the first time I cooked with lemongrass, I did not know these things and I left it all in there and then my soup was very, got a piece of that, it was very chewy. crunchy. And then I was noticing how people were spitting things out in my soup. Right, right. <laughs> so people were nice and swallowing it and, you know. Yeah, right, it's not going to kill you, but you get made so, fun of yeah. by people that So normally... I made the great uh, lemongrass error and now no more. <laughs> Use it. So that's what we're going to heat this up here. We'll get this going. Smash that around. I might even have you stir it, Mary. Okay, you got break it down, break it down. All right. So now we're getting a little bit of brown on the sides of our pan, which means I've got a hot pan going, which is good. But we're going to move it around. Okay. If you need a whisk, it's kind of hard to look. I should have whisked it before I do the hard That's stuff. That's okay. Then. Okay. On a okay. Some heat here, so it'll be okay. All right. So 
Now, got a good saute going on with a little bit of salt. And let's see what else. Here's the recipe up here too, if that helps. Uh, I have my notes here, oh, okay. what I wanted to do. <laughs> so I got that. Okay, this is the other thing. So we have garlic that we've minced. I'm not gonna put it in yet. Garlic can burn really fast. So you need to pay attention to it. And after about a minute, that happens. So I wanted to show you, y'all know how to peel ginger. That's pure. I that. I would just well, pure. There's all kinds of things, but this is really nice. And I go back to the lemongrass and the ginger. That's pretty good. Cool. <coughs> and the Asian grocery store. And the Asian grocery store is right down the street. So you just get really fresh stuff. All right. You can use the ginger grater or I can chop it up. But When they say a knob, they mean about an inch. And I'm showing you this, and I am completely out of them, but they are genius. They'll do garlic too. The zester would work too, right? I might go Yep, way. yep, it will. And a microplane, right? Yes. Yeah. So let's give it away. How are we doing there? Okay. And then I'm not sure at what point Lori wants to talk again, but it's smell of vision smells great. Mm -hmm. And then we chopped up some garlic, so we're gonna get this going. Anything that you wanted to show? Um, do we have an extra clove or anything to show, like the best way to chop up or mince that garlic? I will. I'm going to do this quickly, though. Okay. Um, because I don't want to burn anything. Really? Three minutes away? Hello, everyone. <laughs> Where did she work? I just inhaled yeah. all of all that onion. <laughs> Hi, Mary and Alicia. How's the cooking going in your kitchen? So Excellent. Teresa, just... <laughs> awesome. 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 So good. I'm still using the Instapot. So. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. <laughs> awesome. Good for you. Right. So, I use it quite a bit. <laughs> a little bit about how to prepare some garlic. Um, and Teresa has classes on knife skills. And again, I feel like this has been a game changer um, for people who like to cook is to learn some good knife skills. So she'll demonstrate some options here with the garlic. So you can use a garlic press. Or <clears throat> and we can add more garlic to the soup. Thanks, Joe. All right. The peels came off my garlic really easy. So we've smashed the garlic, right? So we've got this smashed piece of garlic. Now we're going to throw some a little bit of salt on it so we can make a paste. So chop it up. I'm going to put a paper towel under my board. All right, so now you've got minced garlic, but now we're going to have a little fun. Might throw some more salt on it, but we're just gonna move it back and forth. Like I said, I should have put a paper towel on my. Is that so your board went move? Is that yeah? Cool. 
this is fun stuff that you can mix with other things. Oftentimes, garlic paste is mixed with butter and put on a piece of protein, a burger, a steak, something like that, or throw it in your mashed potatoes, your mashed sweet potatoes. Then you just get a nice paste. You can kind of see it. It's getting stuck with it. And it, <laughs> it becomes very sticky. So just know that. But if you don't like pieces of garlic, just get the paste. Stuck there. Great. Nice. So if they're okay with the chunks, they could just mince it and do it that way, or they could go into a paste. Right. And this is a really nice one. <laughs> is. Given it as a present, they love it. You can't, it's still stuck on a boat somewhere. You can't get it right now. <laughs> okay, any questions? If not, I'm going to have Lori talk a little bit about the onions and the ginger and the garlic, the onions and the ginger and the garlic and whatever else you'd like to talk about what we started with, Lori. And Lori, if you also want to talk about the lemon ginger tea, you can yes. do that. As yep. So ginger is one of those very anti-inflammatory foods. And the key, um, the key reason, or one of the reasons we're really focusing on um, anti-inflammatory is because when we can control um, everything somewhat starts with inflammation. So it, it becomes a key factor. And um, onions and garlic are very, um, they work with the liver and are very deep, uh, help the liver detoxify. So that's the benefit there. So as well as giving really great flavor, um, that's their, their claim to fame. And then with the soup, we're using um, wild rice. Has anybody used wild rice before? No, no shakes here. No shakes, okay. Um, well, wild rice isn't actually rice at all, it's grass. So very high in, it's very high in fiber and it uh, never expires either. Um, research I have uh, looked at. Uh, it's a great source of fiber. It's great if you are trying to be anti-grain because it's not grain at all. It's actually a grass. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so good fiber is considered a plant then? Correct, yeah, a plant, not a, not a grain. So it is truly plant-based. So let's see. I'm going to add the mushrooms, Lori. Do you want to talk about? Oh, yes. Mushrooms. <clears throat> okay. uh, thank you. Uh, mushrooms are a great source of vitamin D. It's one of the few foods that contain vitamin D. And then depending upon the type of mushrooms that you use, depends upon how much other um, anti-inflammatory properties it'll have. You, you're more common... Um, White mushrooms, bella mushrooms are quite as high in some of the properties um, versus some of the um, more expensive mushrooms. Uh, you, you see in 2022, I'm seeing a lot for not so much uh, inflammation, but immunity, a lot is being done with mushrooms, but it's also going to be anti-inflammatory. So a very underrated food getting its claim to fame. This year will be mushrooms. <laughs> so we're using um, the ones that you talked about, a white mushroom and a bella mushroom. And then our little quick trip for trick for our um, fish sauce. Fish sauce is the umami of the recipe. Um, we dehydrated some shiitake Ooh. Uh, in soy sauce and what else was i, I mm -hmm. gotta think what it was water salt soy sauce and shiitake so we dehydrated those 
And I set them back, Lori, but um, they may be really salty. So I'm gonna chop them up. Uh, we may, it may be a little too salty. I don't know, we'll, we'll taste it. So we'll have three kinds of mushrooms is, is uh, kind of my riff on this. Mary brought some, I didn't think I had some, I found some, so, um, but um, in the way I like to manage mushrooms, um, because oftentimes you buy a, a portobello and are you scrubbing it or what do you, how do you prep it? So I'm going to show you all um, my little trick. Here, let me turn it off just a minute. Um, I like to peel them and it does take time, but um, man, it makes a difference, I think, because they're fungus. Fungus is good for us. Um, are they organic? Are they not organic? But it's pretty easy. You can't see it as easy with a white mushroom, but you can see it's very easy to peel. You think, oh, it takes too much time. But part of this of being healthy is taking the time to get healthy or stay healthy. And that does take time. Um, yeah, you can do a shortcut and do a can of mushrooms, but I don't think you're gonna get the freshness, the flavor, or the nutrient value that you would in a fresh mushroom. So um, pretty easy to peel and uh, use in soups and stews, and it's very hearty. Uh, so, and this is one of those jobs that you can either listen to your podcast or give somebody the job. <laughs> what can I do? You can peel mushrooms and probably they won't have ever peeled mushrooms. So it's a good little lesson. Have you ever peeled mushrooms? I haven't. This is a new one for me. Okay. I grew up on a farm. We didn't even wash our vegetables. We well, just went from the garden to our mouth. And um, on the farm, who ate mushrooms? Because they might be poison. Right. right. That yeah. was the other thing. Well, we, well, yeah, we did the morel mushroom. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Hmm. No, that's really interesting, uh, Teresa, to feel that. So, like, yeah. What about using, like, I just got to use, like, a wet paper towel on, and get, like, the dirt out. Yeah. Like, and then how work. frustrating is that? Does it really work? I mean, it does work. You can get it on. But <laughs> <laughs> it, it is, um, it works, whatever, whatever you'd like to do just to get them in is a good idea. Okay, so let's see, we've infused that. Now we're gonna bring all of this together. All right, so I am, this is the great thing about coconut milk. It's not like it's gonna burn, like if you had real milk. <laughs> Has a higher flash point. <laughs> yeah. So we've got a lot going here. Now I'm gonna strain my coconut milk that's been infused with the lemon grass. And the cilantro. Is anybody in the front row a facial? <laughs> How many times can you infuse lemongrass? Is it like one and done and it's gotten almost all of its properties out? I think so. And the reason is because you've infused the lemongrass with something else. Mm, so you both entered into a relationship. And <laughs> 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 um, good just to be done, but also um, good for the compost, right? Mm -hmm. And part of cooking in this day and age is using all the parts, just like the peels for the carrot stock, the cilantro stems. It's all good stuff. No one's just been taught how to use it all. Okay, so. We've got our infused milk. 
And that's going to sit there a minute. I'm going to turn this stuff on. We're going to get these mushrooms going. Yummy. In here. All right. What else do I need in there, Jill? Some fish sauce. Hey. Where's that going? Um, yes, you can put the sauce in with the um, milk if you want. Oh, sure, sure. Okay. So, and a sprig of cilantro. Yes. So, we've got and a coconut milk, but we're going to do our curry paste and our milk and our fish sauce all together. And who can. Who knows about fish sauce? Anybody? I know it tastes good, but it smells gross. Yeah, it's fermented food. So another one of the food groups that Lori likes us to have, fermented foods. So um, what is fish sauce fermented from? Fish. <laughs> <laughs> and it's really hard to find good fish sauce. It, it really is. Um, mostly it's just saltiness but it is part i think it's used in uh, a lot of foods i think it's used in a lot of packaged foods just because the umami that it does bring but um and i did have the sauce but i thought oh we'll make it so that's where i got the shiitake mushrooms the water and the salt you're just bringing more flavor to the table so i made it ahead Basically, you boil it and bring it down and just reduce it. Um, and what were you boiling? Uh, water and soy sauce and hydrating the mushrooms. And it's a couple tablespoons, isn't it? How many tablespoons? There's um, no fish in yours. Three. 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 Okay. No fish in mine. Oh. But. I thought, okay, we bring in umami and we can talk about it, but fermented foods are awesome. Who's got kids that eat sauerkraut out of the kitchen or out of the fridge? Anybody? Oh my God. Oh my God. Okay. Kids, like, where's the bubbies? Yeah. Yeah, it's like the Put it in a bowl. Put it in a bowl. All right. Okay, so we've got this going on. So we put our fish sauce, and now we need to put our curry paste in our milk, right? Is that what we're doing? Yeah, is that still infused? It's, uh, yeah, this has been infused. Oh, so this you is... can do that, and you can add it, your curry paste to the other pan, I think. Or my, yeah. How much curry paste? Mm -hmm. Megan, you read. Oh, this was the part where it was edited incorrectly, wasn't it? I was like, Mary, it says it in the recipe, but it doesn't have it in the ingredients. How many? What do you, what do you usually do for curry paste, Mary? I usually do a couple teaspoons, but I like my stuff spicy. Um, so, you know, yeah, I think that's a good half tea there. Yeah, we're, we're doing quite a bit. We can add a little bit more. And I'll let Mary talk about red or green. Well, it's one, one tablespoon. One tablespoon? Yeah, yeah. so we well, did it. Okay. Yeah, 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 we did pretty good there. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, My favorite place to get curry paste, and I didn't go there because Fish Proper donates um, ingredients that Teresa didn't um, have for this recipe. Um, but I do like to go to the Asian grocery store or the Thai store here in East Village to get my paste. I feel it's better than the Thai Asian brand. Um, but green, I feel, is a little bit less um, spicy than the red. But they're all yummy. <laughs> You're right. Yeah, and that and and in cooking, that's important. Taste as you go. Taste as you go. The one thing you didn't mention, Teresa, is what to do with your ginger after you use part of it. So there are different things you can do, but you can pop this in the freezer. So people will say, well, mushy garlic. Well, it's mushy when it's going in, right? So you can do that. I um, You wrap it in tin foil, right? 
Yeah, and then just stick it in a bag and stick it in the freezer and take it out. But I would cut it in the sizes that you think you're going to use each time. So you don't pull this frozen thing out and like, oh, what am I going to do? Or, you know, peel it, stick it in the freezer before you peel it. Um, and you can also, I know of people that I'll stick it in sherry vinegar. And so um, just to keep it submersed in the fridge. So that keeps it fresh too. And the sherry doesn't, you know, it's not going to add anything that um, you don't want. It's just a great little flavor. Okay. And we talk about this too. We talk about citrus. So I have my limes that we're going to slice and put over the soup. But I um, think the zest is a great thing to use. Um, as well, because it adds another component. So we're going to do a little zest here, because you're going to squeeze the lime when you have the soup. But that's a waste that we didn't use. All right, layers upon layers. How many ingredients do we have? We're trying to get to 25 each day, right, Lori? Yeah, it doesn't matter. One or the other, it's all gonna go together. All right, so, all right. The recipe calls for sugar and I'm putting it in. Do you hear that, Lori? Calls for sugar, not go, no go, no go. We're gonna follow the rules tonight. <laughs> Mary's drinking on the job, but we're going to follow the rules, Mary. <laughs> Can I say something? Yeah. Yes. Teresa, when I went to get to the store, I had to ask where the coconut milk and the lemongrass was located. I've never used it before. Yeah. Yeah, not a not a bad question. And then did they say shelf stable coconut milk? Or... No, they, he took me right to the Asian section. Oh, okay. Okay. Because <laughs> uh, there's two ways to buy coconut milk, and it was it was the canned milk that we needed for the recipe. So I didn't say that. I forgot to say that. And did you find lemongrass? I did. Ooh, they did it with all their other time and everything else, but I have vegetarian daughters who use coconut milk with all of their soups. <laughs> it's because it's so yummy. Yes, <laughs> it really is. It's so yummy. But you, the trick will be up, man. You'll have infused coconut milk. They won't even know what you're talking about, right? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Alicia, how's the Instapot going? Good, I think it's done. I wasn't sure, cause I had already cooked my rice. Mm -hmm. So I was thinking maybe those directions for the actual recipe were if it wasn't cooked, I was thinking. Right, I think it, but it, um, it didn't say that real specifically, but um, if you cooked it uh, already, then your recipe's done. It'll be done. I yeah. know, yeah. I just tried it. Yeah. It's pretty good. Oh, good. I think I might add a little bit more lime, but it's really good. Yeah, so, to break yeah, it. Yeah. I got the same thing, Alicia, when I cooked my rice ahead of time, too. I thought, no, oh, should I have done that? <laughs> yeah, I know. Because I was like, yeah. Anyway, I was like, um, I don't think I need to actually pressure cook it. <laughs> I just sauteed it on Alicia, low, actually. I have a question for your um, the flavor. So you tasted and then you needed to add lime juice. Is that? Um, is there anything else you should add? Woo, shit. Oops, sorry. <laughs> I don't think so. Go ahead, you two. That's it. Now it's like instant, instant square, instant pot. I feel like that's a hard question because you're the chef who knows like how things are missing. And so like, yeah. how, how do you know when you taste something like this needs more acid or mm -hmm. this needs more salt or it needs more, you said brighten. So yeah. what does that mean for you? 
Yeah. To, well, to brighten, um, oftentimes you get a little starchy flavor, Alicia, and to brighten, you would use vinegar or acidic lemon, lime, something yeah. like that. And in, um, uh, you know, Eastern recipes, oftentimes it's rice vinegar is added at the end if you don't have citrus. All right, we're gonna put more coconut milk in here. And I'm gonna stir this around. Mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. Did you make fish sauce or did you buy fish sauce? Alicia or Mary? I had it. I kind of do, my husband is Thai Dom, so we do a lot of Asian cooking. <laughs> And so, uh, yeah, I already had it, luckily. And I made it, so. And wow. Alicia, do you recommend a brand or a certain kind? I, I don't know if it's the one that he would prefer, but it's just the Thai kitchen one. I don't know if there's another one that is better, but. Sometimes I think, you know, you got a good one if it really stinks. <laughs> Yeah, it does. <laughs> Do you have a brand that you guys suggest? No, I don't. I don't. Okay. Now, here's my rest. Here's my rest. Calls for a cup. Um, calls for a cup uncooked and when it comes to wild rice it doesn't go bad but sometimes we you get a cup or so floating around forever so I just had a staff member call the wild rice so we can make salad this weekend so I'm gonna throw in one cup Half three. There we go. So it was a whole bag. Look at that. Wow. Right? A whole bag. Mm. Mm. It's so good. So we'll make a salad with it this weekend. Okay. Cream of mushrooms. Too. All right. Mantra. Anything else I'm forgetting? <laughs> I don't want to do anything. I think we're good. Don't we'll serve with the limes. I think I'll taste it here. We'll whack that off. But you said you made this soup before? Nope. <laughs> I was keeping with our plan. Right. We've never pre made a recipe. We're just complete guinea pigs. <laughs> so far, we haven't had a wah wah. <laughs> there was one time there were a lot of ingredients, and that's when I learned from Lori. But she likes to have 25 ingredients per day in your body that are really good ingredients, right? Okay. Just gonna taste, see what we need to add. The mm. shiitake mushroom is a little tough, but otherwise I would add a whole lot more curry paste but I won't do that for you, <laughs> right? You, so you think it needs more heat? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Definitely. You want to taste some, Mary? Can you tell these me? are, I think it's, is it? Oh, it's green chili pepper, garlic, lemongrass, and then it just says spices, salt, and shallot, and lime peel, and my green curry. Mm. Absolutely delicious, but I think it needs more heat. What do you guys think? Mary, have you tasted yours? No, I'm just finishing adding the limes, <laughs> the lime juice. Okay. But that's about all I've got left, I think. Right. What kind of paste did you guys use? Did you use uh, a different than green? I used green, but I used about two tablespoons, <laughs> maybe. I can't imagine that I... 
Let's dish it up. Okay, sounds good. Okay, Lori, I'm sure there's fragrance. Okay. okay, here's what I'm going to do. Spoons are right there. But um, how about a little bit of lime and the cilantro? Anybody not want cilantro? Yeah, pass those down. Okay. Do you want me to dish it when you do the garnish? You bet. That'd be great. Questions, concerns, likes, dislikes. Mm -hmm. What do we got? Um, so I've seen white coconut milk versus full fat. What, what are your thoughts on? So this weekend when I was shopping for coconut milk and you buy the light or the full fat. And on the labels, they were exactly the same. Hmm. Right? So Neither are the market employee. Well, I was trying to figure it out. And I wish I'd saved the other can because we did a class that had coconut milk, and that's why I bought so much. And I was like, use whatever you need to, and I'll use the other. And so it was, I don't know. I just I found it interesting. Okay. So what did you, what are you using? The full fat one? Unsweetened. Oh, okay. And it has organic coconut, purified water, and whatever oh. gar gum is. G-U-A-R. Yes, that's in mine too. <laughs> this is Any uh, for Aaron here. Okay. And then you and Julie. Okay. Any comments on gar gum? It sounds awful. Yeah. It's a little bit of a stabilizer. Okay. Um, but typically the light has more water added. Mm -hmm. so okay. Keeping that in mind, it'll make your soup or dish or curry less creamy based. Okay. And okay. that, um, the flavors will, are always enhanced in their uh, attached to a, flat, a fat molecule. So your soups will always um, be more flavorful with all the flavors when <clears throat> it's fat based versus too light. So you might want, if it's two cans, sometimes you might want to do a, you know, a mix of a full fat versus a light or, but to keep it in mind. Good to know. If you don't just have that, you know, so, so that you're really balancing the flavors and not just having salty. Okay, sure, okay, good to know. Oh, Teresa, it's delicious. Right on. Yeah. yeah. Okay, <laughs> so. Uh, Mary and Alicia, any questions for Lori Graff? Um, and then if you've got some questions you can ask and we want you to be able to enjoy your meal while it's warm. Well, are there any other anti-inflammatory um, vegetables and fruits you recommend, Lori? Really, the 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 rainbow of all um, fruits and vegetables because all different colors serve a purpose. And then we really talk about phytonutrients, which are the nutrients that are that are found within the fruits and vegetables that are so important. Um, like ginger, we really talk about for arthritis type of inflammations or joints, but really it, it really, anytime that you can incorporate fruits, vegetables, herbs, lots of variety, you're going to be moving towards anti-inflammatory. Great question, Mary. Thank mm -hmm. you. So one thing Lori has said a lot in our classes when she talks about diversity, and if I remember correctly, it's 50 in a week, right? 
50 different foods and including spices in a week. So every now and then I like to give myself a challenge and I'll start, you know, one day and for the next seven days, I'll write everything I eat um, and see if I can get to that 50 in a week. Um, and it really does keep me kind of on track of not eating the same breakfast every day or the same Greek yogurt for lunch or whatever and diversifying the color of fruits and vegetables. And, you know, I always find the first 35 are really easy. And then it's like, <laughs> wait a minute, you know, I've already had red peppers or I've already had it. So it really does make you think about other fruits and vegetables that you may not be incorporating or spices. Um, so it, it's a fun way to think healthy for me anyway. So that might be, uh, again, Lori's talked a lot about the diversity of food and how that plays a role in a lot of things and one being inflammation. So, yeah, does this anti-inflammatory also help with like gut health? You know, does they talk about anti-inflammatory, you know, inflammatory in your gut when you're having those issues? Does that also help with that? Is it more joints and things like that? Lori, did you hear that question? Is is the anti-inflammatory focusing on that for foods for anti-inflammatory for our joints? Does it also have anti-inflammatory benefits for our digestive health? Does it affect our stomach and our intestines and our digestive health? The diversity. Yeah, but yes, like focusing on anti-inflammatory foods. It, it will because we're we're really focusing on more nutrients. We're focusing on foods with fiber. And you will, you just cannot have a good microbiome without adequate fiber because it's the fiber that really helps you create, um, the, um, uh, it's coming to me in a moment, um, and helps with immunity and anti-inflammatory. So it's a key component. And uh, whenever we, uh, and the, the more variety, the more different types of bacteria we consume or we might, our bacteria normally create. And I also remember Lorraine saying like, your stomach doesn't have teeth, right? So the importance of chewing. Mm -hmm. And uh, so especially if we've got high fiber food, you know, letting those flavors stay in your mouth and chew Ayurvedic medicine, if I remember correctly, they recommend 30 chews before you mm -hmm. swallow up. So um, that really can help as well with your digestive health, right, Lori? Yes, very, 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 very true. I always say, look at your food. Now that food, we're trying to get all those nutrients into your vein, you know, look at your, your wrist, those veins and arteries. <laughs> all those nutrients have to end up in there. So the better we, the more we chew, the easier absorption we, digestion we have, the better absorption we have, super important. And Lori, I also remember learning from you that when we chew, it signals to the brain that we'll become full, that we'll be happy and satiated. So the better we chew, the, the, the more we'll become full and less likely then to overconsume, right? Yeah, yeah. Smelling food and chewing food actually helps send those signals. So when you go to a fast food restaurant and you never have the opportunity to even smell the food, you, uh, you miss... <laughs> the body talking to the brain to say, hey, food's coming, preparation. Uh, and so then it is much easier to overeat. Great tips. Mary and Alicia, any other comments? No, really good. It was great, it's delicious, I love it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, thank you for joining us virtually. We're glad that you thank guys you. did. It turned out great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Um, any other questions for Lori here? All right. Thank wild, you, Lori. Go ahead. I was just going to say, now wild rice can become part of your staple um, in your pantry yeah, because it doesn't expire really high in fiber. Um, it, it up. It's a great addition. There were 18 ingredients tonight, Lori. So, Yay. We were awesome. So if you had your 35 already, you went over the top. Right. <laughs> Thank you, Lori. Thank you for your time. Such a pleasure. You're welcome. It's Thanks, great to Lori. see everyone.
Yeah, thank you. Feel better. Bye, Mary. Thanks. Okay, bye. Thank you. Anybody want any more? There's plenty. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, I